Hello everyone, and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Michael and Cole devise a dangerous plan, and Tucker receives a puzzling phone call. Victoria and Claire arrive at the tack house ecstatic about their time together. Victoria tells Claire she couldn't be happier with her career aspirations. Claire observes that Cole was distracted over lunch and that things were strained between him and Grandpa. What do you think's going on with those two? Victoria confides that Cole told Nick that he believes Victor is more engaged in Jordan's killing than he admits. Cole suspects Victor is hiding something, since he shuts him down whenever he asks questions. Claire inquires, what do you think? In society, Cole sits in the cage, wondering about Jordan. Michael appears and snaps him out of his daydream. He informs him, there's something you and I need to talk about. First, he must hire him as his attorney to ensure confidentiality. Michael believes that's excessive and promises he'll be discreet. Cole believes that once he hears what he has to say, he may decide to make it official. Michael instructs Cole to pay him a dollar and consider him on retainer. Cole informs Michael that Jordan is alive. This was not what Michael was wanting to hear. Have you seen her? Cole says, yes. Victor is keeping her locked up in the main home. Michael curses. Jordan discovers a wire under the mattress in her cell and attempts to pick the cage lock with it. Please, let me get out. Victor enters the ranch's subterranean hallway after opening the door. As Jordan struggles to pick the lock, Victor approaches and asks why she wants to leave. She's having a great time with her vodka and Brussels sprouts. You received a guest, didn't you? Don't you? More, could cutting bring back a missing character? Nikki rolls her bag into the living area and shouts out to Victor. Alan, Jack, and Tracy at the Abbott Mansion try to discover out what happened to Ashley after Tucker departed Paris. Alan muses that time is unaccounted for. Jack learns he may not have been speaking to Ashley when he called her in Paris. Ashley stands up in the jazz lounge after collapsing and tells Tucker she does not need to be sent to the hospital. She inquires, what are we doing here? Tucker attempts to convince her to sit down, she seems wobbly on her feet. He walks her to a chair and informs her she has passed out. Fortunately, I was close enough to catch you. Ashley believes he is exaggerating and warns him not to touch her as he tries to hold her in her seat. He insisted on taking her home. You are not well, and you don't remember what happened. Ashley does not want Tucker to interfere with her life, but he claims that he is taking her home to her family. Ashley proposes that he find Audra. I'm going. Tucker warns her she is in trouble right now. He believes she knows this, and she is terrified. It's okay. He would be, too. It is acceptable to seek assistance, it is not a sign of weakness, but rather of power. It requires courage. Please, you need assistance. You need to be home with your family, and I am taking you. Ashley whispers, okay. They file out. Alan, Jack, and Tracy remain at the Abbott Mansion, discussing the events in Paris. Tracy concludes that whatever happened occurred on the second trip, when she returned to Paris with her. The mood swings started following her second visit to the café. Alan considers it a good working theory. Tracy shouts, I left her there. This really tears my heart. What can we do? How can we help her? Alan replies, it is up to Ashley. It is critical that they connect with her, because she is the only one who can explain what trauma caused the DID. Alan informs Tracy and Jack that once they address the fundamental causes, the altercation should subside. Jack suspects that will not be the end of it. Alan believes she will need therapy in a restricted atmosphere. He thinks Ashley will make the decision herself. Tracy is unsure if she would ever accept to return to Fairview. Alan is convinced that they will get her through it. They are concerned about finding her, and they promise to keep each other updated. Tucker and Ashley arrive at the door, and Jack is showing Alan out. Jack fumes, what are you doing with my sister? 
They enter, and Tucker informs the family that Ashley has collapsed. Ashley can't recall. Tucker tells Alan he believes it was a blackout. She couldn't recall how she got there. He reveals that she was trying to persuade him that they belonged together. Ashley does not recollect any of that. Jack complains that this has made Tucker a hero. Tucker says he is concerned. Jack accuses him of trying to reintegrate himself into her life. Tucker exclaims, can't we do this right now? She needs help. He informs Ashley that it's time she was honest with herself and her family. At society, Michael kicks himself for accepting Victor's narrative about Jordan. It occurs to him that Victor is normally so cautious. How did you find out? Cole claims he's been acting really secretive recently. He is said to be on the property, but no one has seen him. He asked him what was going on, but he was irritated and ordered him out of the house. He hung around and followed him. After leaving, he slipped down the basement and discovered a prison cell. Michael clucks, oh, Victor. Cole claims Jordan asked her to get him out. Michael inquires, did you? Cole responds, hell, no. He fully understands Victor's motivation. He's attempting to protect his family and punish Jordan, but getting on her level isn't the solution. This must cease. Michael agrees. Cole does not want to get Victor into trouble. That's why I came to you for advice. Michael muses, advice on how to take on Victor Newman. More, Claire's future is in the hands of, spoiler. Jordan wonders in the ranch basement if Victor will sell her admission to his own zoo. He's relieved to see she's kept her sense of humor. Jordan is eager to get started. Bring me a vial of poison and I'll be free. Victor will not make things easy for her, assuring her that he has no sense of decency when it comes to her. He will not kill her as long as she remains useful to him. He tells her to get on the floor and eat the Brussels sprouts, and he'll grab her another bottle of vodka. He walks away, and Jordan yells at him to come back. In the tack house, Victoria and Claire talk about how nice it is to feel secure. Nikki arrives, and they are overjoyed to see her. She states that the counselors believed she was doing so well that she could continue her work from home. They are all delighted about a Jordan-free world. Nikki wonders whether they know where Victor is. The staff claimed he hadn't left, but she can't find him anywhere. At society, Michael wonders why Victor is always playing God. He is concerned that even if they get Jordan out of there and into a proper prison, she will reveal that she was held captive and tortured. Cole claims to see rats and spiders that do not exist. She barely recognized him at first. He doubts anyone would accept anything she says, given her history. Michael grunts, one can only hope. Cole inquires, any ideas? Michael claims Victor will not listen to reason. They'll have to perform the dirty job, getting her out of the cage and into a proper jail. Cole muses, without Victor knowing. Michael grimaces and finishes his drink.